Hey guys, my name is Dylan Hong, and this is a quick review of this thing, the Leap Motion. So the Leap Motion has been out now for uh, a few years. It originally was created in 2010 and started as a Kickstarter campaign, and from there it has been released to the public. So we're talking about it again because of some new beta software that's pretty impressive. It's Leap Motion version 2.0, and there's no new hardware involved. It's the same first-gen product as launched in the Kickstarter campaign, just with some new software that gives it a few new features. So getting the Leap Motion set up is actually pretty simple. You just head over to Leap Motion's website, and they give you some software that you just install like any other software. So here's the new impressive stuff. Um, unlike other versions of Leap software, this has smart tracking, which lets you do things like close your fist. And as you can see, it's still a beta, it's not perfect, but it is pretty interesting. Because based on old software, or my experience with old software, I would put my fist in, close my hand, and then instead of showing a fist like this, yeah, you see it's glitching a bit, but instead of showing a fist, it would actually just have the hand disappear, have all the fingers disappear. So it's very useful in that sense. Um, this is supposed to help improve stabilization in usage, in everyday usage, because the Leap Motion has been kind of unreliable in many applications that you would use it in. So after playing around with your Leap Motion, you should check out the Airspace store. I've been following this store for a year or two now, and to be honest, it's kind of disappointing to watch how little this has actually grown. Um, if you check in what's new, you find a lot of these apps that are very scrappily made and, you know, don't work too well. And same with even the software that Leap pushes out. This app that I'm currently using to control my computer is called Touchless, and it's actually built by Leap. And as you can see, as I'm trying to navigate, it can be pretty glitchy. It could be argued that this problem is based off of the beta software. But even before then, even when it was just version 1, when it was supposedly running pretty smoothly, I still ran into a few problems. So I quit out of Touchless, and I'm going to try out Freeform. Um, this is my masterpiece that I have created. Um, it's a pig, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, this app is pretty fun. It's supposedly a modeling tool, right, where you can select a different type of, I don't know, size, then tool, I'll do a build, or grow, and then you can zoom in and sculpt something that's his wonderfully sculpted tail that I'll just throw on right there. And so this works fine. Um, they say you can 3D print these, you can export them and 3D print them, but using the MakerBot that I have access to, it doesn't seem like they're very configurable to print. Um, many of the things I have to print with supports, and even those don't turn out very well. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to criticize the Elite Motion too much, I'm just saying that there's a lot of room for improvement, especially in practical usage of this software and hardware. I have done a project with Elite Motion that I have found is a semi-practical use and something more for fun, and you can check it out here. Um, I use the Elite Motion to control an RC helicopter, and that does show signs of practical use. And because of this, I do really understand how difficult this is from a coding perspective and from an information perspective, but the software is just not there yet. So after playing around with this and the new beta software, I think it's pretty safe to say that the Leap Motion still has a long ways to go before there's any practical usage for this. Because right now I would definitely not trust this to remotely disable a bomb or um, perform surgery. But for small apps and games, uh, the tolerance is pretty forgivable. Although I don't think that this is the next big thing, I think it's a sign that we're getting closer to it. Um, virtual reality is getting more easily accessible and cheaper for everyday use. For example, this was only $80, and seeing something that's as powerful and has as much potential for this, for that price, is pretty impressive. So while this particular product isn't the future for 3D sensors, 
it could be a stepping stone to get to the next big leap in technology for that area. My name is Dylan Hong, and this was an updated review of Leap Motion from Beta 2 Software.